Your adrenals are super important when it comes to energy production and stress resistance. Unfortunately, many people have weak adrenals or even completely burned out adrenals. So in this video, I want to talk about how to strengthen your adrenal function. And we will also talk about how to recover from adrenal fatigue and adrenal burnout. When we do this, you will also understand why most protocols you find online don't work and what you need to do instead. I will show you step by step. This will be a longer video, but extremely helpful for you if you suffer from one of the symptoms that are commonly associated with weak adrenals, such as chronic fatigue or the sensation of feeling tired but wired, where you're tired all the time, but your mind is still racing. Before we get started, let me quickly recap what the adrenals are and why we need them. There are two walnut-sized disc-shaped glands that are located atop each kidney on your lower back. Now, they are important because they secrete certain hormones that help our body deal with stress. For example, adrenaline, noradrenaline, cortisol, and also small amounts of the sex hormones. Now, usually when someone talks about hormones and the role in stress, they refer to either adrenaline or cortisol because those are the two main players that are involved in our stress response. And they're both released by the adrenal glands. They basically put you in the fight or flight response that increases blood sugar, raises blood pressure, and increases your energy production. This is all so your body can react quickly to any dangers or triggers. Now, when we refer to weak adrenals, we usually mean chronically underactive adrenal glands. This is either referred to adrenal fatigue or in very bad cases, referred to as adrenal burnout. Now, just as a side note, adrenal fatigue is not an accepted medical condition, and this is not medical advice. Only when your levels of certain hormones, such as cortisol, are so low in the blood that they are detectable with blood tests, do you speak of Addison's disease. This is a complete burnout of the adrenal glands. Unfortunately, we do have many cases that don't have detectable Addison's in the blood, but still show symptoms of adrenal fatigue. And that's why we use the term. So it is a helpful concept from a nutritional point of view. And that's what we will focus on now. How to strengthen your adrenal function through lifestyle and diet choices. We will also talk about supplements, of course. Now, when you look at most protocols online, what you will notice is that they all recommend a mix of herbs, supplements, and lifestyle changes. Before I show you the best way of doing this, what you need to know is that, unfortunately, these protocols usually don't work. They have two critical flaws. One is that they don't test correctly for your current adrenal function, so they don't have an accurate way of measuring adrenal status. And two is that they give bad recommendations. That's because they're based on false data, because like I said before, they don't have a way of accurately measuring adrenal status. The reason for the first flaw, so bad testing, is that most practitioners work with either blood, urine, or saliva hormonal tests. They will usually measure the stress hormones, so cortisol and adrenaline. The problem is that the levels of these hormones fluctuate from moment to moment and from day to day. So really what you're going to get is only a look of what's going on right now. But what you want instead is an average over the last couple of weeks and months of what was going on with your adrenal glands and how they function on average. Also, like I said before, many of these tests often come back fine, even though the patients have very severe symptoms. So what do you test instead to get reliant data? Basically, you want to do a hair mineral analysis. I say this in almost all my videos, but it really is true. It's the most important test in determining your health status, and this includes your adrenal glands. Why? Because certain minerals in your hair correlate with adrenal function. The most important are sodium and potassium. You see, when you are under acute stress, your adrenal glands will release a hormone called aldosterone, and it spikes sodium. And this spike can be seen on a hair analysis. Now, when you're under constant long-term stress, over time, your adrenals lose the ability to constantly pump out more aldosterone so your sodium levels will actually plummet. Potassium is also somewhat regulated by aldosterone, so it's a secondary indicator of your adrenal function. 
These low sodium and potassium values are also key to understanding how to heal from adrenal fatigue and adrenal burnout. So assuming that you got a hair analysis and your test indicated adrenal burnout, what do you do? Well, the first step is to try to understand what led to this chronic overactivity that led to the burnout of the adrenal glands. In pretty much all cases, it's too much stress coupled with a low level of the nutrients that are needed to calm down the body. So the adrenals are literally burnt out of nutrients and have nothing left to work with. The biggest mistake people make at this point is that they use very stimulating herbs and supplements to whip the adrenals again and get them going. This can include caffeine from coffee, for example, or also very high doses of vitamin C or nutrients such as copper or manganese. These are all stimulating nutrients that stimulate not only your body, but your adrenal glands and force them to overact. But if your adrenals are burned out, that's exactly the opposite of what you want to do. Instead, you first need to reduce stress. This should be obvious. And stress can come in many forms. It can be physical stress, so actually overworking yourself. It can be emotional stress in the form of trauma. And it can also be environmental stress from environmental toxins or heavy metals, for example. The reason stress is so important is because it triggers the sympathetic nervous system. This is what activates the fight or flight that I talked about earlier. If you're under constant stress, you run into something called sympathetic dominance, where your sympathetic nervous system works all the time and your parasympathetic nervous system, which is the one that triggers the rest and digest response, never gets activated anymore. What we want to achieve is to get you out of sympathetic dominance and reestablish the healthy balance between your sympathetic and your parasympathetic nervous system. So the baseline for all of this, the baseline for healing your adrenals, and the very first step should always be to lower stress. And also make sure to watch for hidden stimulants. These can come in the form of caffeine, like I said before, but it can also be extreme exercise or overworking yourself. A good indicator of being too stressed is your ability to meditate. If you can't sit or lie down and meditate for more than 10 minutes, you are overstimulated and definitely need to reduce your stress. Okay, on to the nutritional support. What can you do in terms of diet and supplements? What we will be doing and what sets this protocol apart from others is that we will only focus on vitamins, minerals, and optionally amino acids. The reason for this is that herbs and other supplements are usually understudied and overcontaminated. What I mean by this is that we often don't know how specific herbs actually react in the body. We kind of know that they can stimulate you or calm you down, but the actual biochemical process behind all of this is often not well understood. And they're also often contaminated with pesticides and toxins, especially when they come from low quality brands. So instead, we will only be focusing on micronutrients. So again, vitamins, minerals, and amino acids. The first step will be to calm your adrenals with specific nutrients. And the most calming nutrients are actually three minerals, magnesium, calcium, and zinc. Most people are deficient in these because they get thrown out by the body once you're under stress, sometimes in a matter of seconds. Our body does this to stimulate you, to rev up your metabolism, and to get you to act. So it throws out all the calming nutrients that it has. But when you're under constant stress, you quickly develop a deficiency in these three minerals. So what we must do first in terms of nutrition before we even look at your adrenals is to calm you down. This can take time. These nutrition deficiencies that have developed over years are not solved in a matter of days and weeks. It can take months. Now you want to find your optimal dosage for these three and you want to work with an experienced practitioner because it isn't as easy as simply buying a magnesium, calcium and zinc supplement. Also, every time I talk about calcium supplementation, I need to tell you that you must definitely watch my video on how to take calcium correctly because there's always the risk of tissue calcification if you over supplement. Once we've calmed you down, we can then look at nutrients that help rebuild the adrenal glands. The primary nutrients here are sodium, potassium, and vitamin C. They are stimulating nutrients that will increase adrenal function. You definitely need them, but be careful, especially with vitamin C. 
There are many protocols online that call for very high doses of vitamin C. Sometimes I see 1,000, 2,000, or even 3,000 milligrams of vitamin C per day. The problem is that vitamin C is a very stimulating nutrient that whips your adrenals. It's important for the adrenals, but it can lead to overfunction. Common side effects are feeling agitated or anxious. Also, what happens is that if you're copper toxic, vitamin C will pull out that copper. And the side effects of copper toxicity are copper dumping, which will be explained in a different video. Now, for all these nutrients, so both the calming nutrients, magnesium, calcium, and zinc, as well as the stimulating nutrients, sodium, potassium, and vitamin C, please watch my videos on how to take them correctly. There are many things that you can do wrong here, and it's critical that you go slowly. One last category of supplements that I want to talk about are adrenal glandular or adrenal cortic supplements. They can help rebuild your adrenals because they deliver freeze-dried adrenal tissue, but they can also be too stimulating at times. So it kind of depends on you if you tolerate them or not. Great, at this point, we're almost done with the video. Let me quickly recap the most important steps so you can follow them one by one. First, stop following one-size-fits-all protocols. They simply don't work. Next, focus on reducing stress. And like I said before, that stress can come in many different forms. Then get a hair analysis to test your nutrient and adrenal status. Then work with a practitioner to design a diet and supplement program that is tailored to your needs and not those of someone else. And lastly, have patience. This can take a while and sometimes it feels like an eternity. I speak from personal experience, but you will definitely feel better. This is a gradual process. And if you stick to the program and take it step by step, you will see results, I promise.